Time Walk with Me. Hey everybody, welcome back to Time Walk with Me. Today we are putting the spotlight on my landfall deck, captained by Obun Muldaya Ancestor. This guy is not essential to the deck. Um, he's good, of course, but this is not a deck that depends on the commander. It is all about landfall. So, uh, but we'll go over what everything does, starting with Obun here. He is a 3-3, and he is a pre-con commander. He came in a pre-constructed deck, but of course I've uh, expanded upon it since then. Uh, actually, I think I've completely overhauled it. At the beginning of combat on your turn, up to one target land you control becomes an XX elemental creature with trample and haste until end of turn where X is Obun's power. It's still a land. And the landfall ability on him, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. So naturally he would be the one you'd most likely want to put the plus one plus one counters on. And then you can get a really big land creature but that's not the main thing I do in this deck, but it is a cool thing. Okay, so here we have landfall creatures. Here we got Lotus Cobra, 2-1 uh, snake. When a land enters the battlefield under your control, add one mana of any color. Very handy, especially if you have things that allow you to bring out more than one land in a turn, which of course this deck is going to be full of. Zendikar's Royal, an enchantment, it is green. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 2-2 green elemental creature token. Lots of little 2-2s there. Evolution Sage, 3-2. When a land enters the battlefield under your control, proliferate. And proliferate just means uh, choose any number of permanents and or players, then give each another c counter of each kind already there. So... It works on poison counters, it works on charge counters, it works on plus one plus one counters, any kind of counter on any permanent or player. Here's Maja Maha, Bretgard Protector, and originally this was actually the commander of this deck, but I expanded it to include red. This gives other creatures I control plus one plus one, and whenever a land enters the battlefield under my, under my control, create a one one human warrior creature token. That's cool. These are a little extra shiny because they are double-sleeved. I think they are. Uh, actually, no, they're not. They're not double-sleeved. They're just extra shiny for no good reason. Here's a retreat to Kazandu. Landfall is an enchantment with landfall whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control. I can either put a plus one plus one counter on a creature or gain two life. Most likely, I'm going to be using the plus one plus one counters, but you never know when you need extra life. Here we have Phylath, World Sculptor. 5-5, five, five, Legendary Elemental. When he enters the battlefield, create a 0-1 green plant creature token for each basic land you control. And whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters on target plant you control. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Scute Swarm. This one really, uh, really goes crazy in this deck. It's a 1-1 one, one insect. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you get a 1-1 one, one green insect token. But if you control six or more lands, uh, you create a token that's a copy of Skute Swarm instead. So every time you put a land starting with your sixth, you get you double your number of Skute Swarms, which you can imagine gets out of hand. Here we have Spore Mound. 3-3 three, three, Fungus. When a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 1-1... One, one Saperling, green Saperling creature token. McKindy Ox, this one uh, taps a creature and opponent controls when you get a land. So here we have Felidar Retreat. So when a land enters the battlefield under your control, you get either a 2 2 white cat beast creature token or a plus one plus one counter on each of your creatures and they gain vigilance until end of turn. So that's pretty good. A Maria Angel, 3-3 three, three Flying Angel, and whenever you put out a land, you can make a 1-1 one, one White Bird creature token with flying. Too bad birds are not real. Uh, Rampaging Baloths, it's a 6-6 six, six Trample, and when you put out a land, you get a 4-4 four, four Green Beast 
creature token. The 4-4 beast doesn't have trample though, so... Oh well, could be better. Akum Hellkites. Uh, I think this is a recent addition to this deck. When a land enters the battlefield under your control, he does one damage to any target. If that land is a mountain, he does two damage to that permanent or player instead. So if you put out a mountain and you want to do the damage to a planeswalker, it can only do the one. Spitfire Lagak, Lagak, something like that. Uh, when a land enters the battlefield under your control, he deals one damage to each opponent. So that hurts everybody and makes everybody hate you. Territorial Scythe Cat, 2-1 Trample, when a land enters the battlefield, blah blah blah, he gets a plus one plus one counter. Pretty simple. Not too splashy there. Omnath, Omnath? Omnath, Locus of Rage, however that's pronounced. Uh, you get a 5-5 five, five red and green elemental creature token, and whenever either he or another elemental you control dies, he does 3 damage to any target. So that's pretty cool. 3-2, uh, Tireless Provisioner is a 3-2, and whenever a land enters the battlefield, you get a food or a treasure token. As if you don't have enough mana going on in this, but the food tokens could be handy. I don't know. More mana is always helpful. 2-3 Vigilance, uh, Prowling Felidar. When a land enters the battlefield, you get a plus one plus one counter on Prowling Felidar. Uh, Colony Heart Expedition. You can you put a quest counter on it whenever you put out a land, and remove three quest counters and sacrifice it. Search your library for up to two basic lands, put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. So you get two more landfall triggers when this goes off. Seer Sundial, when a land enters the battlefield under your control, you can pay two and then draw a card. But you don't have to. So you do have to remember that trigger, but maybe your playgroup will remind you because they're nice. Tunneling Geopede. This is a 3-2 insect, a red insect. When a land enters the battlefield under your control, one damage to each opponent. So another one of those make everyone hate you creatures, kind of like the Spitfire Lagak. So if you have both out, you get double triggers, and that's scary. Okay, now we'll look at the cards that put out more lands. These are the, the ramp spells because this is a green deck, so it's going to have to have a lot of ramp. Sylvan Scrying, search your library for a land, reveal it, put it into your hand, and that's any land, not just a basic land, so there are some spicy lands in this deck. Harrow, this one you sacrifice a land, and then you look for two lands and put them onto the battlefield, and not tapped either. Roiling Regrowth, sacrifice a land, look for two, put them onto the battlefield, tapped. So this one's a little bit like Harrow, but not as good because the lands come into play tapped but it's still good because you get those landfall triggers traverse the outlands search your library for up to x basic land cards where x is the greatest power among creatures you control so if your oboon is pretty big then this will get you lots of lands uh, and then put them onto the battlefield tapped and then shuffle circuitous root Search your library for up to two basic land cards and or gate cards, then put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. Sakura Tribelder, uh, if you, he's a 1-1 snake shaman. If you sacrifice him, you can search for a basic land, put it on the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. Nylea's Intervention, this is an X and two green sorcery. Uh, search your library for... Uh, choose one. You can either search for up to X lands, reveal them, and put them into your hand. So any lands, not just basics, but they go they go into your hand instead of onto the battlefield. Or you can deal twice X damage to each creature with flying. So if your opponent is being annoying and hurting you, you can stop them. But you're most likely going to be going for those those lands. Spring Bloom Druid, 1-1, one, one. when he enters the battlefield, you can sacrifice a land and then look for two basic lands and put them onto the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle. Templeth Discovery, so first you shuffle, shuffle. So first you search your library for a basic land, no, for a land, for any land, and put it onto the battlefield, untapped, unless the land says otherwise. 
Then each opponent can search the library for a land and put it onto the battlefield. But for everyone who does that, you get to search for another one. So they're going to have to weigh their options. Get more lands and give you more triggers, or leave it alone and not benefit. Far Wanderings, search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle. And if you got seven more cards in your graveyard, instead look for up to three and put them onto the battlefield. So you can get lots of lots of triggers off that. Scape Shift, sacrifice any number of lands, search your library for up to that many basic that many land cards, not just basics, and put them onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle your library. So this can give you lots, lots and lots of, of uh, landfall triggers. This is Renewal. Search your library for up to three basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library, and then you gain seven life. So that's good. Who doesn't want more life? Farhaven Elf, when it enters the battlefield, search the library for a basic land, put it on the battlefield tapped, shuffle your library. Kodama's Reach, search, search your library for up to two basic lands, reveal them, put one on the battlefield tapped, and the other in your hand, then shuffle. So there we go, we got some good stuff there. Scape Shift is especially handy. Okay, now we will look at cards that let you play additional lands. There aren't that many in this deck. We got Mina and Den, Wildborn. You can play an additional land on each of your turns. Green and a red, return a land you control to its owner's hand. Target creature gains trample until end of turn. So that can give you more, more triggers without having to draw more lands. Azusa, Lost but Seeking. You can play two additional lands on each of your turns. This, I've used, this has been devastating in games before. Here we got Rites of Flourishing at the beginning of each player's draw step. That player draws an additional card, so it's a Howling Mine. Plus, uh, each player may play an additional land on each of their turns. So it's uh, there's an enchantment that does that. Don't remember what it's called, but this is that too. Lanoir Scout. Tap it to put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. Now this is different from playing a land. When you play a land, you're playing your land for the turn. Except in the case of Azusa, where you are playing your lands for the turn. But Lanoir Scout puts lands directly into play in the way that Kodama's Reach does. It's an, it's an important distinction sometimes. All right, now here we have some spice. We got Crucible of Worlds. This is These are all cards that let you play car lands from your graveyard. We got Crucible of Worlds. This was a very lucky uh, rare from a pack. Uh, Ramunap Excavator. 2-3 Naga Cleric. You can play lands from your graveyard. And then we've got the big boy, Ancient Green Warden. He is a 5-7 with reach. Uh, you can play lands from your graveyard. And Landfall triggers twice. So that can get very handy. Very scary. Okay, so here we have cards that return lands from the graveyard to the battlefield. We got Splendid Reclamation, which returns all your lands from the graveyard to the battlefield tapped, including the sacrifice lands that let you search. Of course, there would have to be some of those in here. Mending of Dominaria, mill two cards, then you can return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Then, on the third chapter, return all lands from your graveyard to the battlefield. And you do get the landfall triggers from those, of course. And here we have a controversial card. Fall of the Thran. Now the first chapter is destroy all lands. So it is mass land destruction and you would think, why are you destroying all the lands in a landfall deck? Because of chapters 2 and 3. Each player returns two land cards from their graveyard to the battlefield. So this gives you more landfall triggers and it messes up your opponent's plans. Okay, now we're going to show you the almost the final category. We got very rare, very uh, lucky card from a pack. Ren and Six. It is a Planeswalker. Its plus one is to return up to one land from your graveyard to your hand. So that's really good after Fall of Thran, when you have all your stuff in the graveyard. Uh, it's minus one. It deals one damage to any target. Whatever. I guess that could be handy. And minus seven, you get an emblem with instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard have retrace. So you can 
recast all of your um, you know your interventions or your or your ramp spells. Good stuff. Here we have, you know this is one of my favorite cards, Abundance. So whenever you would draw a card, you can instead choose land or non-land, and then reveal the top card of your library until you reveal one of those. And then you put that in your hand and the rest on bottom of your library. So if you need more landfall triggers, you can get them every turn. If you don't, you can avoid them. Abundance. Good in any green deck. Highly recommend. So I got Multani, Yavamaya's Avatar. It is a 0-0 zero, zero with Reach and Trample, and he gets plus 1, plus 1 for each land you control and each land in your graveyard. And you return two lands you control to their owner's hand to return him from the graveyard to your hand. He costs 6, so recasting him all the time might get a little pricey, but you're going to have plenty of lands, so, you know, might be worth it. Here we got Ruin Ghost. This is a recent addition to this deck. 1-1 one, one, Spirit, uh, one, a white and tap him, exile target land you control, then return it to the battlefield under your control. So you get another landfall trigger from him. Storm Cauldron. This one is fun, and your opponents will hate you for it. This is an artifact during each player's turn. That player can play an additional land. It says put an additional land into play, but that's old alliances wording. It's play another land. So... Uh, and whenever a land is tapped for mana, return that land to its owner's hand. So it's going to give you lots of landfall triggers, and it's going to mess up your opponent's plans. We got Glacial Chasm. This would be in the land section because it is a land, but it's not here for mana. It's here for its ability. Now, when it comes into play, sacrifice a land, and there are ways to get lands back in this deck. Cum cumulative Upkeep to Life. Big deal. This is uh, Commander, so you start with 40. You got plenty. Life is a resource. And you cannot attack. All damage dealt to you is reduced to zero. So you can sort of wait everybody out, lay low, build up your board. No one can hit you. And then you just don't pay the cumulative upkeep, let it die, and then go crazy. Or you can, uh, you can keep casting and recasting it if you have, like, Azusa out and um, something that lets you play lands from your graveyard. Good stuff. Animist's Awakening. Reveal the top X cards of your library, put all land cards from among them onto the battlefield tapped, and then the rest on bottom in a random order. If there are two or more instants and or sorcery cards in your graveyard, untap those lands. So that's a good one. Lots of landfall triggers, of course. And then we have lands. This deck is about a little less than half lands. It's got about uh, 48 lands, I think. Somewhere around there. Because I need a lot of lands. We got Rith's Grove. Taps for one of the three colors. Basically a man of any color that's in this deck. Gruel Turf. That's T-U-R-F, not T-E-R-F. So... Don't worry about that one. Now, the cool thing about this is that when it enters the battlefield, return a land you control to its owner's hand. Now, in a game, I once had Azusa Lost But Seeking out, and I would play this, and then with its ability, I would bounce itself back into my hand. So I would get that landfall trigger, then I would play it again, bounce it back, play it again, bounce it back. I would get three landfall triggers off this one card. And, of course, I have every combination of colors in this deck. I got the green and red, red and white, and green and white. Plus, I've got Guildless Commons, which does the same thing, but with colorless. So, very good cards for this deck. We got Evolving Wilds, kind of a no-brainer for this deck. Terramorphic Expanse, same thing as Evolving Wilds. Myriad Landscape, so that gives you two basic land cards onto the battlefield, so two triggers. Fabled Passage, lets you, lets you search for a basic land and put it on, onto the battlefield tapped, then you untap it if you control four or more lands. 
so that could be very good. Blighted Woodland, this lets you search for up to two basic lands and put them onto the battlefield tapped. Two triggers for you. Cabaretti Courtyard, so this one, um, as soon as it enters the battlefield, you sacrifice it, and then you search for a basic mountain, forest, or plains. And then you gain one life, so that's fun too. Sun Home Fortress of the Legion, taps for a colorless, or you can give a creature double strike until end of turn, and you're going to have big, beefy creatures, so it's good to give them double strike. Good utility. Command Tower, duh, no-brainer. Jungle Shrine, enters tapped and taps for any color in this deck. And then the rest of this is basics. Forests, plains, mountain. And I have a, a formula for deciding how many lands to put in. I basically count up all the number of pips in all the cards um, mana cost, and then I figure out the proportion from there of how many lands of each type. So there we go. This is Obun Moldaya Ancestor, my landfall deck. What did you think? See you later.